Do you have a hope that maybe theoretical physics will open the door to some exciting propulsion systems? Yeah, I do. I think we're still at the very infancy of our understanding of everything and how things work. And, you know, a hundred years ago, it would be stupid to try to predict the things we know today. And who knows, like even, you know, I think about things like James Webb, looking deeper into our solar system than ever before and physically being able to see objects that we just have not even been able to physically see before. Oh, and being what? able to study black holes, for example, uh, at better, better, the stuff that's happening outside of black holes, at the edges of black holes, you know, how the information is stored, uh, the, uh, just the holographic principles. Just there's so much weirdness <laughs> around, around black holes. Yes, so around where g gravity starts bending light, it's like all right, <laughs> we get to look at that now and, and start to wonder like what is going on. And how, how can we like use that somehow exactly. for propulsion? I mean, it seems like awfully crazy and futuristic at this moment, but I think that's because we know almost nothing about, uh, you know, that those kinds of objects where, again, where the general relativity and quantum mechanics start to, start to um, have to be both considered to describe those kinds of objects. And as we study those objects, we might figure out some kind of unification thing that will allow us to uh, understand maybe how to use black holes to for propulsion. Like, yeah. to, uh, I, mean, I, I, I could say I, a lot be, of crazy things, but like basically. But the, the point is it'd be stupid for us to even guess about things we don't even know about yet. You know what I mean? Like, and so uh, therefore I'm not going to say that the best option for interstellar travel is nuclear drives like that could be like someone saying you know in 1600 the only way to fly is by strapping a thousand birds to your head you know yeah. like but uh, that said i mean everything you're saying is right but human history is such like at the beginning of the 20th century physicists rutherford they, everybody there's there's brilliant people that said we've basically solved all of it right if you talk to most physicists i think they're going to say like we've pretty much solved like the standard model describes physics extremely accurately right uh general relativity explains the cosmos as we observe them extremely accurately yeah there's a whole dark matter dark energy thing Ooh, whatever yeah but uh outside of that we so like the, we basically solved like like where are you go going to find gaps in knowledge that are going to somehow create warp drives or something like that. Right. so wormholes uh but uh, that's, it seems like throughout history, we prove ourselves wrong 100%. time and time again. And yes. No, I, and I, this is well outside of any of my knowledge base. So I want to make sure that if I say anything stupid, it's because I'm a, just a, a peasant here in, in physics land. But yes, um, <laughs> we're but all yeah, peasants I, in physics land. <laughs> but I, I really just think like, it's very humbling that we're still using chemical propulsion and, and variant cell, like ejecting mass to, to propel ourselves. And I, I no matter how you get at it. And I think someday I, I, I would expect that our species has figured out a way to, to get beyond that.